Welcome. Um, welcome back. This is Erica. And this is Sherry. And this is Generation, Generation Conversation. Conversation. Happy, happy holidays. Yes. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Happy New Year. Oh, my goodness. Going That's into so 2021. I know. 20, come on, 2021. Come, <laughs> in, come in strong, but good and nice. <laughs> yes. So today, guys, um, of course, we got to give our shout outs yes. to everybody. Yes. Weird Kid. Shout out, Weird Kid. Geeky Consulting. Thank you so much, girls. And of course, all of our listeners and everybody who's supporting us, sharing us, all of that. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys, for sticking with us and actually inviting new people to listen to us as, as well we encourage you to continue to do that please yes and continue to give feedback that's yes. always good feedback yes. we need what you want us want us to see or excuse me want us to do more of want us to do less of want to hear less of <laughs> um let us know <laughs> Yes, thank you so much. So, Erica, what are we doing today? So, today our topic is called As Seen on Social Media, Stop Ge Stop Comparing Generations. So, what we want to do, um, when we see certain topics on social media, we'll have a piece as seen on social media and then the topic. So, we'll continue that throughout just random episodes where something on social media might have sparked our interest and we want to talk about it. Right. So, I found this particular clip on social media and thought it was so very relevant to what we do mm -hmm. and um i guess we kind of just want them to listen to it right yeah okay let's hear it all right what i thought you were gonna explain it okay okay we can back it up because you were wanting to say about how not comparing you know even though well, it seems I, like I, what I we gonna, do yeah i was gonna when i said should we keep going? No. When I say explain it, like, I, didn't, I want them to listen to that part first. I just wanted to explain that we were going to play a video. Oh. And then, so now, after they listen to it, then we could say, you know, he talked about, because if we okay. say that first. That's what I thought you were wanting to do. Yeah, no. So then you come back in and mm -hmm. you say that piece. I say what piece? about how oh right right you know what i'm talking about mm -hmm. what am i talking about about how it's relevant to us and but not really right even though we joke about it right us comparing okay yes ready yes all right that was pretty good right yeah it was really good very very relevant but also it sounds like it's going against everything right. that we say right <laughs> because that's what we do in our podcast pretty much is compare generations mm -hmm. and he's basically saying that we should not compare generations right but the thing is is that um he's saying we shouldn't compare generations and it's you know just to say that you know the older generation is bad or the the new right. generation is bad and even though sometimes we may do that we do that in a laughing manner right. to just joke about it but right but tell us what you said erica at the very beginning on that first episode right so yeah the first episode hopefully you guys tuned into that <laughs> um we talked about what our goals were for the podcast and i said that one of mine was to um you know talk about gener differences in generations in hopes of generating conversation and hopes of bringing about change so right. that's really what the goal is for our podcast right just right. to clarify you know like she said the title is saying stop comparing <laughs> generations and here we over here we are over here comparing generations but essentially that's not our goal behind the podcast right right so what we want to do basically what we try to do in in comparing generations is just bring up is differences in our generation and you know it's times where I agree that you know your generation is you know quote unquote better or doing More a better job or, of doing something yeah, yeah um but it's a combination because you know there is great things about the you know previous generations there are great things about the current generation mm -hmm. but I think what he's saying and he has a very good point and I really liked his perspective on it was what I think he's saying basically is stop saying that, you know, the new generation should not be doing this because, mm -hmm. you know, they're lazy, they're, right. you know, not, you know, what they call them, um, uh, where they're not, not so intelligent, 
not as intelligent or not as motivated or right. whatever the case is, um, that we should stop doing that. And I agree with him. I yeah, agree with him. I do. I do agree as well. I feel like it's a good stepping stone. Um, like he even said at the end, though, what exactly what I said as far as stop comparing them, but we do need to have conversations right. about it. Right. And that's definitely what we try to do here. And in conversation, you'll find enlightening differences that you know, there are differences, but that's something that'll bring us closer together. Right. Right. And it's just always stopping the comparison within anything, I feel. That never solves anything. Right. You're always comparing, saying who's better at this, that you don't get anywhere. You're just still divided. When right. you have conversations, you can compare the differences, but also find similarities that make you guys a whole and work together. And I think I said something like that in the first episode as well. I said that, um, you know, our differences and is what makes us great mm -hmm. you know what i mean we need mm -hmm. the older generations and we need the newer generations and them coming together makes us great but let's we didn't say his name oh yes yes <laughs> so his name um is at underscore ahmad the poet um he i looked on his page the other day this is his instagram name i'm not sure if it's the same on all the social platforms but he does the motivational speaking and on different topics he's very well spoken mm -hmm. he's young um, too he's only 21 I think. okay mm -hmm. he's very and young. then he has um he has a brand another page linked to him called it's, the ancestral plane yes mm -hmm. yes and i didn't look too much into this but i'm assuming it may be talking about our ancestors or even just i was saw on his instagram videos of people in the past um famous people i saw jay-z on there mm -hmm. um i saw mary J. I saw several people on there so right right um i think he's also out of um i want to say where did i see that he was from um i can't remember but Michigan. Oh, okay. Yeah, because we have an alliance uh, jersey. But um, very, very well spoken. He's an orator, you know, social media influencer, etc. But some of the things that he said, Erica, give me something that he said that really caught your attention. Um, Just about how everything as far as the comparisons, because the more saying that you guys your morals are better than ours you feel like they feel like they're smarter than us or they carry this, themselves differently and i get that a lot of times i talk to older people and they, it's almost like they always look down on us but then again i feel like older people in the generation of before them they experience the same, same thing. thing so yeah. i feel like it's just a cycle a continuous yeah. cycle somebody will always feel like Oh, you know, well, you didn't have to go through the, this like us. Okay, right. y'all ain't have to go through a pand pandemic at this young of an age as us, you know? Or just different things. Um, it's always going to be a comparison thing, so that resonated with me. What about mm -hmm. you? Yep, um, I agree. I think that one of the things that he says it, that's very important is, although things are very different, that doesn't make the younger generation um, you know lazier and we need to determine or we need to look and see what determines the social climate and the environment yeah, because yeah. that makes a big difference um you know if you're living in an age where you have all this technology it is going to seem like you're lazier because you're right you know, the only reason we probably worked harder, harder is, because, is because we didn't have right. access and to who's to say technology. how y'all would be right with technology right. in this day and age y'all could be the exact same right. way or even worse right. so there's no way to actually make a definite comparison mm -hmm. and i even you know growing up with you all you always say what what was the saying it's the same thing different day or whatever right. Right. whatever y'all would right. say but right. it's not it's not there's it's similar things that happen throughout life but the factors that influence a lot of the stuff or just the environment we're in is so totally different you can't say it is but it's it's the the core of things are is the, i believe that the core of things is the same it how it resonates how you react to it and things like that and i think what we used to say was like in relevance to dating and see no we could go back like to that. the dating episode dating is so totally different no now. it is but i'm talking about like the game of dating like you know the way people try to play the games the game is the same i don't you think know what so. i mean it's how you play it that's different um because i think people all, I think people think the same way. It's just, you know, how they use the tools around them 
to navigate. Yeah, I guess. I feel like the game, nobody wants to be caught anymore, though. It's like, I don't feel like that was the case back in nobody the day. Nobody wants to be caught? Yeah. Nobody ever wants to be caught. I don't think so. I think the goal, like, was to be in a relationship or to be with somebody. Like, back in the day, that was more of a thing. Like, I mean, to be for certain together. People, for certain you see people. a lot more. That's another thing he was saying about, you know, it's a lot of single parent households. There were a lot of more marriages back in the oh, day. Yeah. People married more. People mm -hmm. were together more. Granted, it may not have been perfect, but people were together. Mm -hmm. People don't, you know, they just, okay, we have a kid. That's cool. That's it. We ain't got to be together. Mm -hmm. Definitely more so the goal back then than it is now. So, that's why I'm like, I don't think the game is essentially the same. Um, but yeah, the environment is totally different. It's just, it's really no real way to compare and even to say how y'all would act in our environment. Right, right. But he did mention about, like you said, about the, the single family homes and kids growing up in single family homes more uh, now. And he said that that's why we are acting out the way we are acting out. And you know that is an influence. It definitely is a big influence as to why um, the generations are doing what they're doing. Um, not necessarily an excuse, but definitely an influence. Because you know, knowing that you know, you, you know, the opportunities are more now. I think you guys have a lot more opportunities than we have. Yeah. So you know, at some point you have to say, okay, even though. I grew up in a single family home, you know, and it's going to be harder because I grew up in a single family home, but I still have the opportunity to do this to a certain extent. Right. Now, it's not total opportunity that if we're talking, you know, race and, and right. you know, social economics and things like that. But for the most part, you know, we have to step up and say, all right, I can still do this. I have access to social media. I have access to a lot more than, you know, my right. parents did. Right. Right. And I still feel like even though you're raised by your parents' parent, it's still a lot of self-teaching involved. Like your parents can't teach you everything because they grew up in a different era. And your parents' mom grew right. up in a different era. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of self-learning that we're doing. Like, you know, for parents who come from a two-parent household, they can't teach you how to be raised in a single-parent household or how to make it in the world as from a single-parent household. You can't teach me how to navigate with social media differences in my era and how not to make that the focus of my life because you didn't experience that. And, you know, whatever was in your generation, your parents couldn't teach you that. Like, it's a lot of self-education done as the generations progress. Right. I think that it's more of a dual, a dual education because I think what should happen is instead of you trying to teach yourself stuff, you take what I, you know, what me are, you know, what your parents are teaching you, put it together with what you know about it, and then y'all come together and try to figure it out. I think it's more of a dual thing, and that's why I think it's so important that we need the older generation and the younger generation. And then the thing is, is that it's a dual process where just as I'm teaching you, I'm learning from you as well. Yeah. Um, you know, if we come together, that's why communication is so important. Tune into our last episode. <laughs> <laughs> communication is so important because if I'm talking to you about, okay, Erica, this is this is what I've learned that works to make you financially free. Yeah. You know what I mean? You have to listen. It, well, it will benefit you to listen to what I have to say, even though things are very different now. But then you can take tools that you know and be like, okay, mom, that's good. But we have this mm -hmm. and you know and then together mm -hmm. you know we can make both of us better and i think what'll make it easier relationships between the different generations is you guys and us too understanding that neither one of us have all the answers right. i feel like y'all feel okay we've had the experience been there done that but you still don't know all the everything you still don't mm -hmm. have all the answers i feel like and then i learned this too whenever i have my kids what our, your job is as a parent or what the um, older generation's job is to lay the groundwork, the foundation of, okay, morals, ethics, mm -hmm. and all of that stuff. This is you know, what I learned, the things I went through in my lifetime. Now take it how you need it, mm -hmm. different pieces, and use it in your current lifetime. Mm -hmm. So it is definitely a dual thing. It is. Um, and it's just, like I said, just everybody being coming together and just acknowledging that. There are some things that are better in my generation. There's some things that were better in your generation. There's things that work better with us together. Right. And just knowing that we neither one of us are perfect. 
neither one of us are overall better than the other one. Right. And no one has all the answers. Now, I think that there is an age limit that we're talking about there. So when we're talking about raising kids, um, you know, you know, you being an adult now, you know, it's a little different because, you know, you, you're an adult. You can make own your, your own decisions and things like that. But I don't think that this, what we're talking about doing is relevant to a 12 year old yeah. or relevant to, you know, at that point, they still need to listen to their parents. You know what I mean? They can say, you know, this is whatever, but they don't know as much. Right. right. Even as they think they know. Right. And then, but that's too where it's kind of, I feel like the power may be overused sometimes. Like, you know, I know I've been there, done that, but then still as the parent, like the kid, they have to listen regardless. The parents still has to take a look at themselves and be like, you know, okay, but I don't know it all. Like the world is evolving every day. Every different things happen, and just doing that self reflection with them themselves. Mm -hmm. Like I said, y'all, what I feel like is y'all rely so heavily on yourselves for all the answers, which I, I don't blame you guys because you know you are the parent or you are the older generation, and a lot mm -hmm. of people look up to you. But then just taking that moment to think, okay, well, I don't know it all, or I don't have all the answers, and just making that a base the basis of your education to the newer generation or to your children, just acknowledging that. I feel like there's just so many people in the older generation just don't want to acknowledge well, that they don't know everything. Right. And what you got to take in, take into, um, take in with that is the fact that you're talking people, when I say people, parents who care so much about their kids that they don't want their kid to go through things mm -hmm. so they want to enforce in you know they want to force their kids to do this because they don't want to see them go through anything bad and of course you know you can't do that all mm -hmm. the time and that's hard for a parent and you'll see when you become a parent how hard that is to you know allow your child to make these mistakes and allow them to figure things out on their own you know mm -hmm. what i mean it's hard it's tough so you know, what we try to do is we try to enforce it and say, okay, no, do this. I'm telling you, I know. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we know only because of what we went through, which may not be the same, like right, you said, but right. still, you know, it worked for us. So we want you to do it mm -hmm. because we know it worked or it didn't work for us. So we want you not to do it. You right, know what I mean? right. So, well, well, actually, let's get someone's input on it. Um, from a younger perspective, see what they have to say about it. We have a guest today. Guest star in the building. <laughs> Somebody who doesn't answer their phone. <laughs> we all know him as 2K Lou. <laughs> all right, 2K. Let's give us a little uh, history. Who are you? How are you related to us? And uh, I'm 2K Lou, and I am their adopted. I'm her adopted son <laughs> and her adopted brother. He's such a liar. <laughs> How old are you? I just got to float around the house. <laughs> How old are you, Kendall? I'm 19. 19. I'm from Snellville, Georgia. The Ville. I go to Appalachian State in Boone, North Carolina. Okay, okay. Hey, what are you selling yourself? Yeah. That's right. I got to get on the level. That's right. And what are your passions? Uh, I like to play basketball. Mm -hmm. And that's about it. Okay. Okay, Erica. Oh, oh my God, girl, you know you're behind. It's too big. Okay, so <laughs> you took a look at the video. Mm -hmm. What did you think about it? Uh, it was interesting to me because he was talking about comparing the uh, what do you say? Comparing the generations. Generations, yeah. Right. How and can you not remember the word generation? Because <laughs> it was just it didn't come to my fast enough. <laughs> but like, yeah, and I don't feel like. You should compare generations because I feel like, like he said, if you plant a seed, it's going to grow. But if, like, if whatever our generation is, it's, a, like he said, it's a, it's a product of what came from before. Like, we're not creating a, a whole new vibe. It's like, it's like branching off of, like, different parts of the old generation we just using different parts of the old generation and making it into our own right did you like his, his um comparison of the farmer and the seed mm -hmm. that was good right yeah. you know he's only 21. yeah i didn't even so. know he was somebody what like like 
<laughs> I didn't know he was. Oh, like a social media yeah. person or whatever. Yeah. Um. What else were you gonna ask, her? Do you feel like the older generation is smarter than your generation? Smarter? I don't think so. I don't think. I don't think like smarter would be the word. I feel like wiser. You think? Because that's a word that a lot of um, older generations use the word, the term wiser. Because it's not necessarily smarter. What's it's the just, difference? One has experience. Wiser has more experience. Like they get their wisdom, wisdom from experience. I mean, of course they're going to have more experience because they're older. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, we trying to do our own thing too. Like, y'all got your own generation. And we got our own generation. We trying to do our own thing with our generation. But do you think that it's important that the generations work together? Uh, not really. Because like I said, if you want to, if we want to have our own generation, uh, if we want to have our own style and stuff in our generation, we can work together, but I don't think it's important for us to work together. Okay. I think we have to. I think we have to because we're in a society together. I think we can we have to work together. What you think, Erica? Yeah, I think it's important for us to work together, um, especially since there's so much in the world to already dividing us or to combat, like, you know, a pandemic. So if we're divided in a pandemic, we can never be on the same page with anything, and that just makes everything worse. Division right. is, like, leads to chaos. Right. Um, and then when we say work together, it doesn't necessarily mean we have to agree on everything. Right, right. I think that's where people get it confused. I definitely right. feel like the differences are what make us stronger. You know, like, you know, you go in a battle or a war, you're good at this thing, and then the other person is good at this thing. Right. But together, y'all right. work together. Right. Yeah, that definitely is it's far it's important. Than our generation. Right. And it was a civil conversation that we... Um, I think that we should get your father's view. Oh, man. Okay. That's all time to TED Talk. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> well, let's get him in. All right. So now we have another special guest, Eric Kendall Lewis. <laughs> why, why do I have to have the whole name? <laughs> Just want to give you a great introduction. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Who are you? How, How are you related to us? us? You know, we ain't gotta know. Okay, like she mentioned, I'm Eric Lewis. I'm the father to Erica and Kendall, and Sherry is my wife. And I'm honored and privileged to finally get a, um, <laughs> <laughs> an interview and have, have my perspective uh, be presented. So, yeah, I'm. What else? Do we so, well, about? <laughs> first of all, Kendall said that he was adopted. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> You're just my dad. <laughs> so um, you watched the video as well. We just wanted to get your input on what you thought about it, and your beliefs towards that topic. Well, to me, he makes a lot of good and valid points within you know what he was talking about. I agree with just about everything he said, and I what I say to people a lot of times is when they talk about this generation, I. How bad these kids, this, these kids, that. These kids don't do this. These kids don't do that. These kids need this. These kids need that. If I was them, if they were me back in the day, they would. But I always say, who are their parents? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. who are their parents? Because isn't doesn't that factor in? I understand the social times and social media and all of that stuff, but the parents factor in in a way that a lot of this is allowed. You know what I'm saying? Either. The parents are too busy working, two jobs when they don't really need to be, or whatever, trying to pay the bills and have things that they didn't have or their parents couldn't give them when they were younger. So therefore, they're not home enough to monitor and know what the kids are doing. Either that or they just don't practice the same morals as they were taught coming up. They, 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 they don't want to be as stringent with the kids. As, they, as their parents were with them. They say their parents were controlling and stuff like that. So do you feel as though the factor in this case would be parenting as opposed to generational differences? Well, it's a little bit of both. There's, 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 a com yes, there's a combination of a lot of different things like social media and the way people interact and con converse and have relationships has changed drastically. Mm -hmm. Just like sim similar to one of your episodes about communicating. The last episode, y'all need to listen. <laughs> yeah, similar <laughs> to one of those, that episode about communication, 
a lot of things are lost in translation. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You can't just talk over the phone, talk over a text and get the same type of uh, interaction. Interaction. You can't get the same type of uh, comprehension. It's just a different comprehension. You Y'all see what I'm doing? I deal with people out there. Oh I can't gosh. finish my, my, my thought process. Oh, yeah, we do that all the time. Sorry. <laughs> but that, that's okay. But uh, but the thing is, yeah, there's a lot of things that are lost. And I'm and I'm be the first one to say, what? how would I be if I had to grow up with social media? Because yeah. I look at things all the time about, like, why did they post this? Why did they do that? I would have probably been doing the same right. thing if I was there. Right. Because that's what was going right. on. Right. But the thing is, what, where are the parents in all of this? And the parents are challenged with the fact that kids are in school, they're with their friends. They, they probably spend an hour, two hours, maybe mm -hmm. a day with their parents with that influence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and a lot of kids, even my kids, buck against structure, buck against the parent trying to do something for their benefit. They don't see it that way. They see it as you're trying to restrict me from doing this. You're trying to restrict me from doing that. And the fact of the matter is, yes, because I've been there. Can I say That's something? Sure. So we did, before you came on, um, we talked about how, you know, it's different factors in the different generations being, you You guys know them from your generation, your experience and what you guys went through. And then us knowing in our time how things are working, social media, all the different influences. Like, I don't feel like, Y'all can teach us on that aspect. It's a lot of stuff that you guys just set the structure for. And then some stuff we have to learn on our own. Like, you can't really teach me how to navigate social media or how to go about it because you didn't experience that. I have to kind of learn, like, okay, is this too much? Or how am I going to work through this? Like, when social media is the basis of our generation, you know, it's not easy for us to shy away from. So it's just finding that balance in between you guys being the parent and setting the structure but also understand that you don't have all the answers. There is stuff that you guys aren't going to know and just being able to relay that. And that's where I feel like the differences in generations need to be talked about and respected in both sides. I feel like in experience talking to older people, they know everything, you know, we've been there, done that. No, you haven't. You well, haven't. You, you some stuff you haven't you, been there, done. You, but you haven't experienced that from us, that we know everything. Well, no, I'm saying you some, saying? some right, right. right, some people you just talk to, they don't want to hear nothing. Right, like, you right. young, you dumb, you, you don't know and, nothing. And I would be the first to admit that, you know, I don't know everything. But here's the thing with, when it comes to social media and your generation navigating our way through it true we don't we don't we don't relate to social media like y'all did we didn't grow up in that social media area even you it's different for kendall yeah you know you're right, right. six years removed he's right. more in, involved in that but right. our job as parents and then kids have a responsibility too our job is to help y'all navigate it through morally morally mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying there are some things that maybe social media is the main difference but it's, there's always moral values that are in there yeah. that, that you that that make the basis. What right. is your foundation? What do you believe? Mm. And you make those decisions morally. That's how we navigate. Help y'all navigate that. Not telling y'all how to surf the web right. or anything like that. And that's you know? what I was saying. So, the ba like that's yeah. why it's important to have that foundation. And then that's where parenting comes in. Did you or Kendall have something? Yeah, to say? and that's why I wanted to say too. Um, the point that I was trying to make before Daddy kind of touched on it is that they. Um, the basis of it, that's why we need both the older generation and the new, newer generation. And also there is a, a an age limit. Like when they're 12 years old, then it's not, you know, listen to what they have to say as far as, you know, they have to show us how to navigate through this or navigate. No, up to a certain age, I think, then we can come together and work together. And I say there's a lot of stuff that this generation can teach us. Oh, yeah. as well it's always been that way and we have to be open to that and we try to be you know what i mean we have to be open to that and i think a lot of older generations i think that that's part of the problem right i, I was just gonna before. say that like you guys didn't have a say y'all couldn't sit in these conversations these conversations probably didn't exist right you probably we maybe don't up. even still exist but it's important right. i feel mm -hmm. and just to be one unity is important it is because we're both trying you know we're both in this this era right now it's our era. It's not right, your era. Right, it's exactly. not my era. It's our era. And we have to get through it together. Right. You know what I, I mean? I think both sides need to be willing to listen mm -hmm. and, and, and try to put yourself in the other person's right, right, shoes. Right. But w one of the biggest issues in both the younger generation and the older generation have an issue, a problem where the younger generation has to say, okay, everything that that older generation did wasn't wrong, right. bad. 
and everything and then uh the older generation has to say the same thing vice versa right. yeah right. everything this younger generation to your point sherry is that we got we can learn from them we always mm -hmm. i learn from right everybody right mm -hmm. you can't be closed-minded yeah. like that right yeah. i'm interested to see what kendall has to say i'm just listening to y'all and just trying to figure out like my opinion on it i don't really know my opinion really so i'm just listening to y'all so yeah. do you think that we um or older not just us but just like older people that you come across do you think that they tend to down the younger generation yeah and so? i feel like they're more they're less likely to change than the mm -hmm. new generation because mm -hmm. i feel like they've been brought up on the same principles and stuff so they feel like all right that's what i'm that's what i'm used to so i'm gonna stick to that and try right. to get people to do how i came up but so like okay with the sport of basketball you know it's it's a specific thing but mm -hmm. even that could be generational differences mm -hmm. do you feel like like they be talking about how like the game is weaker now right. or like but like it is i mean <laughs> it, 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 it it might be but it's nobody fact, wants to drop to the basket you know, but it's the fact that the game is also a lot better now than it was before like it's more skillful it's more skill set in the game therefore it's harder to guard somebody than it was before so it looks it, it, doesn't, it doesn't look as hard as it used to mm -hmm. so that's a good point yeah, yeah so, that's I, true. I agree with that. that's so there's point. generational differences in across everything. the board in everything, yeah. in everything you know right and the thing is it's not always bad to change right. you know people we resist change we nobody likes change right. we resist change all the time right people are afraid that's of just like an innate thing i think it's just because yeah, it's, it's about thing. it's about being comfortable. uncomfortable yeah right. nobody wants to do what's uncomfortable but when like we all have to experience something life changing like you gotta go 2020 the right <laughs> you know you gotta we gotta go, go through, through the uncomfortable and we have to seek out to our resources and all come together as one is right. what i really feel now i do think that it is important that younger people at least hear what the older people yeah. have to say sometimes Even, we don't be trying to hear right <laughs> right i think a lot of times they think and, and i think too we as the older generation have to, has to we have to learn how to communicate to the younger generation because i think the way we come off is do this that's it that's the only way and that's yeah. not necessarily the way we always want it to come off you know what i mean we want to give our opinion and we just want you to listen and consider it yeah it's all about how you say it too sometimes right. because you know you could say this is what what, what i went through you know, I think it's best you do it this way. Right. And then that'll leave leeway for in the future. You know, I, I consider what you said. I'll be like, hmm, let me see what my mom, my dad, my thing, my aunt, my uncle. Right. To have that opening and be able to talk to them openly as opposed to, nah, they're just going to say it's just one right. way. Not really feel like they're being understanding because right. they just see it one way. Right. Um, did you guys have any closing remarks or statements? I appreciate you guys <laughs> all coming on as a family. <laughs> Y'all just take notes. This is rare. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. We have conversations yeah, like this all the time. We do. But I, I want to close with um, just saying I'm glad I'm here. I love my family. <laughs> my family is very important to me. Um, the the pre, the moral piece is always is always important to me about morality. It don't matter. It ma matters not what season, what if it's 50 years ago, if it's 100 years ago, if it's today. The same moral principles that you, that we've instilled in y'all, uh, they apply. Mm -hmm. They apply yeah. all the time, and that's what I try to hopefully try to keep y'all in the forefront of y'all minds. Is that the morality marries character? Morality matters. Character matters. All of that stuff. Yeah. So that's those are the main things that I want you to take from everything. Because no matter what's going on in the world, no matter what the world says is acceptable, my principle is about what God says is acceptable. And that's those are the things that I want y'all to keep in the forefront of your mind because the world changes. Everything is yeah. acceptable. Yeah. Everything is acceptable. Do you? The world teaches about you. Do you? If you want to do this, do it. If it feels good, do it. That's what the world says. I disagree completely with that. So that's my thing. Okay. We appreciate that. Woohoo! The Lewis family in the H O U S C Generation Conversation. Come on, y'all, say it with us. No. Generation, Generation Conversation. conversation. Generation Conversation. Generation Conversation. Thank you, guys. Okay. Thank and you. we're out. Peace.